Welcome to Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. It's Monday, July 15th, 2013. We are coming at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me tonight, as wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, is Cole Monroe. Hey, guys. How's, How's going, it man? Going? Long time no podcast. <laughs> it just keeps... Man, life keeps getting in the way. That's all it I can does. say. Freaking life, man. We want to talk video games, but wanting to talk video games and making your schedule work around that isn't always easy. But I'm a busy guy. What can I say? Uh, apparently, people like to come to visit you when you live in Las Vegas. <laughs> Said it's what it was Ho- Hotel Lo Monroe. Yeah, Hotel Monroe slash Lee. That's been fun though, right? Oh yeah, it's been great. I especially still... like the past two weeks when everybody's been gone and we can actually relax. Yeah. So we've been doing like, what? When, when people are here, it's just go, go, go. Um, <laughs> Show them everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what have you been in the last couple weeks? You get to relax a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, let's see. What did I do last weekend? I didn't, I didn't do a whole lot last weekend. I pretty much laid around the house, caught up on some killing, uh, new episodes of The Killing. What do you think of that show? I love that show. Okay. Okay. I don't. I don't. I. I, I can understand why people get pit, got pissed at it after the first season, but I'm just like. Come on, guys! Like it's a slow burn. Okay. Like, I guess I guess in the age of everybody has to have an answer right away, it's it's definitely a, a dinosaur when it comes to that because it definitely you know draws it out. But you I know I thought that was cool. But I also I also watched the first and second season after they had already been on the air. Yeah, I was gonna say so, you, you know who would love to have that show is Netflix. Yeah, like, for sure. Where they can just they can just dump the whole season on you. Yeah, um, and, but I, I really like the actors. Um, second season it, was good. Second season, yeah, it was good. It, okay. it wrapped up the first season storyline. The third season is um, it started off pretty strong. Um, I just love Holder. He's the the male cop. Mm-hmm. He is he is awesome. He's actually the new RoboCop. Um, okay, when that movie comes out, so um, you know expect big things from him pretty soon. But he's hilarious in the role. Um, so. I think he's he, him alone is worth watching the series just is, because of how like nuanced his character is. Is he kind of the scrawny mustache like goatee? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's him. So he's kind of scrawny for a RoboCop. Yeah, I think he probably he probably buffs up for RoboCop. And I but, guess um, the robot part of him can be buff. <laughs> yeah, because you know um, what's his face wasn't that buff. Okay. Yeah. In the first RoboCop, but but last this Saturday, I saw Pacific Rim. God, I'm so jealous. God damn it. That movie, this is what I've been telling everybody that's asked me about it. That movie is really fucking stupid. <laughs> but it is also really fucking awesome. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to take a turn. <laughs> like, and I tell people, it reminds me of, like, the feeling you get when you watch, like, Commando, Robocop, Running Man. Like, those movies are kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, storyline-wise, eh. But just action is off. It's just off and running. It's just awesome. Um, my favorite thing about Pacific Rim is you sit down, you're ready for the movie, all the trailers have passed, and they're like, oh, you came to see Robots vs. Monsters? Well, here you go. And they just start it off, like, right from the get-go. And um, I posted on Twitter that it was uh, Always Sunny and Sons of Anarchy and uh, The Wire vs. Monsters. <laughs> And uh, that's pretty much what it is. I, I, until you said that, I didn't realize that Charlie Day from Always Sunday was even in the movie. I didn't know that until one of my the guys I was watching it with uh, said that he was in it, and he was oh, he was Charlie Day in the movie, but he was smart Charlie, which mm-hmm. is kind of weird. Um, but he's basically the same character, only he's a scientist who's it's his his. There's him and another guy. I can't remember what his name is, or I've seen him before. They're the comedic. Um, comedic effect for the movie and they do a really well really good job um uh, it's laugh out loud like really stupid laugh out loud stupid okay yeah like the independence day like rally speech i started cracking up when i, was <laughs> I mean and they give it away in the trailer um but it's just like uh, just the way stringer bell is saying it i think that's I, a I think there's a clip of that and the um in the one of the trailers, um, yeah, it, that seemed yeah, to be cancel, the, cancel the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, the apocalypse. I started, I started cracking up. He says apocalypse <laughs> really weird. 
Yeah, he does. Apocalypse. Well, he's, he's, he's British trying to play an American, so that's probably why it's... Oh, I never knew that. Awesome. Yeah. yeah he's wow. <laughs> he did a good job. Apparently, <laughs> apparently uh, there's a show called Luther that he's on. Mm-hmm. That's supposed to be really good. It's on Netflix, but I haven't watched it. It's like a cop show. I like I like me some Stringer Bell. Really good. So yeah, he's he's awesome, as Stringer Bell. I uh, I can't wait yeah, to see that movie. I, everybody needs to go see it. Um, it's just you feel like you feel really good after watching the movie. It's just like yeah, it's, it's uplifting. Kind of, it's yeah, it's uplifting. It's like a combination of like Top Gun, Armageddon. Uh, Independence Day kind of all rolled into one. Like you have like different aspects of each of those movies just kind of combined into this one big awesome thing. So yeah. go watch it. Well, let's see why not. Uh, we want more of this stupid shit. Yeah, I mean, it's there's something to be said for a movie that knows exactly what it is like that. Like yeah, and and for somebody like maybe ta- maybe it, yeah maybe it takes a Del Toro to pull that off like without. You know, blowing the joke. You know what I mean? And because yeah. it could have fallen on its face, and it sounds like it. You know, it's big dumb fun. So yeah, it's it's great. And and a lot of people are like, well, is it like Transformers where the action is like so quick you can't see anything? No, you see everything. <laughs> there's like, I don't want to spoil it because it, it it's so. There's just one really dumb. A really, 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 really dumb part in the movie that is so fucking awesome. Let's just say that since I haven't seen it, in my mind right now, you're describing a robot giving one of the giant monsters a rock bottom. You're not far. <laughs> or a stunner. There's not like, there's not, I mean, you're not far off. People's that's elbow. Not the part, that's not the part that, uh, that I'm talking about. There are some wrestling moves, but when you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm in. I'm in. Um, I was a little bit distracted this weekend. Um, yeah, what happened? I proposed to my girlfriend this weekend. Hey, congratulations. Did she say yes? In short, she called me an asshole, and then she said yes. So. Okay, well that's good. At least she said yes before. I, I mean, I congratulated before I knew she said yes. That so bad. So it was kind of kind of interesting. We always do these off-topic uh, intros to our podcasts, and you know, all all I've been doing the last few weeks is just planning that in my downtime. Like it's really, um, and, it, and there's a lot of little funny stories that happen along the way. And one, I can't tell them on the podcast to tell you guys. Right. Um, and then two, I can't like she's she's also the other person that's gonna get the biggest kick out of the stupid little things that happen along the way, and I can't tell her. So um, that was the kind of funny moment was after the fact, like um, the just the stuff you talk about once it's once it's out. So because um, we were How walking around, ring? we were walking around. Ta- the ring buying, purchasing, or the purchasing aspect. Actually, wasn't as bad as I feared. Like. Yeah. I was I walked into it expecting this to be as painful as buying a car, except I know less about buying rings than I know about buying cars. Um, but I don't know the place I went to knew exactly what I you know I I basically brought in a ring and I was like I need it to be this style it needs to be this size let's go from here so oh cool um, and went back and forth a couple times but what wasn't um, wasn't I feared the worst so. Um, and just really happy that um, it all worked out. I expected the whole plan to go sideways, and um, it it you know the weather cooperated all the way down to um, the photos working out. So that was kind of cool. But, Sorry, you were saying what were you gonna say you were walking around afterwards? Yeah, after the actual proposal, we walked around and got photos taken, and just you know you're making small talk while the photographer's doing his thing. And just like the just the little uh, just catching her up on all the little trips along the way, and because there were so many so many things during that week that um that went wrong as far as I'm trying to plan this thing for Saturday and make sure that she doesn't have any plans and just uh, every everything like threatened it on Thursday and it was just kind of funny because I was just sitting there almost biting through my lip because. <laughs> oh, well, we're, we should go do this and that and this. And I was like, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> but um, I got plans. Yeah. We're, we, <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, you can't do that. And I can't tell you why. 
So that was uh, it was it was it was a lot of fun. So I recommend it to everybody. <laughs> um, and then um, we followed it up on Sunday by going to a uh, birthday for a six six year old of one of my girlfriend's friends' sons, and um, it was. I, I realized that I did not envy anyone that works for a bounce house um, retailer uh, because these guys. They start off as like being the heroes of the day when they show up and put the thing up. But then you have to come back at the end of the day <laughs> and tear that thing down in front of a group of five and six-year-olds that just think you are evil and are screaming at you or crying. Um, so I don't recommend that to anyone to ever work for a company like that. Yeah, I saw some pictures of uh, that event and it uh, looked like it was a good time. Oh, it, it's 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 interesting for the, the, for the kids anyway. Yeah, um, lots of water guns, all that kind of thing. But um, we um, we still have a lot of trouble getting Lily, who's about almost five, to um, to eat all of her food. That's just a constant daily struggle. Um, but yeah. and so Megan thought she was doing a favor for the parents of the six year old boy by basically challenging him to clean his plate i was like and now you're going to see the difference between little boys and little girls because <laughs> you just told this kid he'd get five bucks if he finished his plate and he's going to finish that before you can finish yours and i was like i was like that kid that kid would have put down a full pizza if you had laid that out for him and for uh, sure so that was kind of funny so really funny. lots of family stuff this weekend but a but uh, good times well, good well now you can get past it and focus on video games. <laughs> it's just in time to refocus on the Steam sale. But um, this is a interactive video game podcast. If you haven't figured it out by now, probably didn't give you any clues. But uh, we start, we, we ask questions of the week every week on our Facebook page before the show. And are looking for you and our live audience to uh, uh, help us with, with the answers. Starting with the game of the week. Cole, what you got? Well, I don't know if you covered my... Um game of last week on you know, last Thursday's podcast with Mr. Gifford. A little bit. Um, but. Okay. I've been playing, so I got a Vita. <laughs> um, I completely blame you and Josh Lee for that. You're welcome. But I'm not complaining, really. Uh, I, I actually really enjoy it. And uh, I was very scared of Persona 4 and have been ever since I watched like 10 minutes of Giant Bomb's Endurance Run. And then it came out for Vita. And I was like, man, that, you know what? I might get that one day when it comes out for Vita, if I ever get a Vita. And then uh, got a Vita, and my coworker says, hey, I have Persona 4. I'll let you borrow it. So I borrowed it, and I'm, I'm sucked in. Like, How many hours are you in? Uh, you know what? Not, I'm not, like, I'm only, like, five hours in. But those five hours came in, like, two days. Um, mm-hmm. which isn't a crazy amount of time. Like again, I've been busy. It's been I've been distracted by other beta games and stuff. But it's like it's a really slow start. Like yeah. once you get past the very, very, very slow start, and once you start getting into the first dungeon, and the slow start helps. The slow start helps you build a connection with the characters, and so I already feel like feel close to some of the characters and I, I guess that just kind of continues as you go yeah I I couldn't get past the intro to Persona 3 but I know like well I mean are they still in high school it's, a, it's like a whole high school class in Persona 4 right is that the or are they in college or something they're in school they're in high school yeah um and I just I don't know the the, the structure of going through the school day side of it it was uh it was too too much of a slow burn for me to get into the game, but I totally get where people are. I mean, everyone that is obsessed with that game, all they talk about is the characters, and they they know each one each of them personally, and it's uh it's it's kind of unique in that regard. So, um, like I'm kind of I'm more worried that you're gonna get sucked in because this could be all we talk about for a number of weeks if that happens. Oh no! Like I, I'm definitely like mixing it up with what I what I play, and like because that's not a game you can that I feel you can just jump in and jump out of. Um, mm-hmm. 
I guess there's some people who probably could say that because of the way it's structured. Um, I mean, there, I, are, there are stopping points, but I found with any of those JRPGs and and probably just RPGs in general lately, like lately the last four or five years with my game playing habits, you I don't go back to them. I either stick with them all the way through, um, or I take a break and assume I'll go back. But I, you know, um. Nino Cooney is still waiting for me to come back for the yeah, for the first time I too. Need so. to go back to that too. <laughs> Shit, just laying guilt trips on you now. I forgot about that, and I've been playing The Last of Us too. That game's awesome. Don't really yes. want to talk about it though. Everybody knows it's awesome. Um, but what I've been spending the last couple of days playing is uh, Mortal Kombat on the Vita. Is it this? Five, it's five bucks on PS Plus, so I was like, <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna get it. Um, and this is the the newest Mortal Kombat, right? The one that came out two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Which I never played storyline. So really? Story mode. I just played like multiplayer. Mm-hmm. So I'm really enjoying the single player story mode in that game. Uh, I just beat Mortal Kombat 1, uh, mm-hmm. which is really cool. So um, now I've moved on to playing as Jax. And, uh, yeah, they, I, they basically I sprint through the, the plot lines of the first few games. I think I think all of them. I don't... It's like a retelling of all of them, or yeah, yeah. and then it keeps going. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I started playing that again on P- on PC, and uh, it's weird to play a fighting game for a story mode. But Nether Realms, the last couple games, even going back to MK versus DC, um, the the story modes kind of hook you in, and um, Mortal Kombat has done incredibly well, and it's got a ton of, I mean. I forget the name of it. The the whole um, the challenge tower. The challenge tower is ridiculous. It is. Yeah, I started doing that a little bit it, too. It's addicting. It's and and I I love the. I mean, you have to if if you want to get into it, you have to love the fighting system. But the fight fighting system is right up my alley. Um, it's so good. Yeah. And it looks like I mean there is definitely quality a quality drop from the cutscenes to the actual fighting, mm-hmm. but it still looks really good on the Vita. That's like, awesome. It feels good. Yeah, I mean, it it feels really good. Like I don't, I play with the D pad, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, D pad on the Vita is really good. Um, it's way better than the Xbox controller, so it's it's comfortable. Like it's I still, sh- I get I get caught up with uh, some of the moves a little bit, but it's it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Cool, cool. What have you been playing? Um, I am now. Going into like a hard twenty four hours about only thinking about Mega Man Unlimited, which is what is that? I don't even know. It was released earlier this month. It is a fan made. I think they have like a five person team. Uh, Mega Man game in the style of Mega Man two and three. So, I I could get this completely wrong, but to summarize, I believe when Mega Man nine came out, um, you know it it was. A return to the retro form for Mega Man. They released it as a downloadable game. Um, they styled it, Capcom styled it after Mega Man 2, which is my favorite Mega Man. And, um, you know, it was pretty well received. It's a difficult game and all that. And, but it was, I guess, leaving out a couple like couple abilities that people really like from the later Mega Man games. Namely, sliding and maybe... I know they also mentioned the charge shot, but I don't believe the charge shot is in Mega Man Unlimited. So... This team kind of set out to make Mega Man 10. Like, they almost wanted to sell it to Capcom and be like, this is what we wanted out of that. Well, Capcom went ahead and released a Mega Man 10, um, which is just more more Mega Man. Um, so they renamed it Mega Man Unlimited, and they just recently finished it up. They've been working on it for about five years. And um, it's completely free, and just because Capcom isn't behind it at all, so they can't really make money off of it. But if you were just to give this to anybody... Like in the middle of playing a bunch of Mega Man games, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to pick this up pick this apart from other Mega Man games. So finally played I played it uh, for the first time and I was just beside myself after after playing this game and just having it thoroughly kick my ass. Now I can't say I've played a lot of you know I, I enjoy playing hard games on our live streams. I don't mind making a fool of myself. Um, I do not recommend ever playing a Mega Man game for the first time in front of a live audience. Um, I, I can't say that unless you're just kind of sick like I am. Um, <laughs> but, and I can't say it's like necessarily harder than any other Mega Man game to start or 
any uh, any of the other like really hardcore platformers that I've been playing. But I was just so defeated by it just because I like to consider myself a decent Mega Man player and I just it just for 50 minutes I went through every um opening stage for all the eight bosses and didn't I got to I got to one mini boss. I got to one checkpoint. And in oh, wow. about 45 or 50 minutes of playing it and it has just been chewing away at my brain. Like, I'm going to go back and play this. Um, I was reading up on it later that there, it actually recommends that you use some um, some key mapping software to get to play with your gamepad a little bit better. There were, there were I had a lot of issues um, basically trying to jump onto ladders. Um, I just, I couldn't, I, something wasn't right. Like, either... I wasn't good enough, or I just wasn't hitting the button and the, hitting that up button to climb that ladder ladder in the right uh, moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pushing through because I I wanna I wanna beat one of the I either wanna beat Mega Man Nine or Ten or Unlimited because I haven't scratched the surface on them. Yeah, the, that Mega Man Nine and Ten, I think it was free on PlayStation Plus last yeah. year, and I downloaded both of those and played each of them for like 20 minutes, and I was like, oh my god. I mean, I just don't I'm know. I'm not ready or prepared for any of this. I mean, I I wish I could have I could get inside my head when I first played Mega Man Two, and to see how I reacted to it because it's really daunting to get into any of these games. Like I I think I beat one or two of the bosses, um, in Mega Man Nine, but I never got anywhere in Mega Man Ten. But now I'm just like I've got to I've got to make some progress in one of these. I can't just be the guy that has one Mega Man game he's good at. So that's kind of that's kind of what I've set myself up for, but I don't know. It was it was how many hours have you put into Mega Man two compared oh, who, to Mega Man though? Who knows? I mean, you know, like that's why you're good at Mega Man two. Yeah, I mean, there's probably I mean, it was probably the only game I played for a month at a time, and who right. like exactly. I remember being being a, being really fascinated with how because those games didn't have a, a battery backup or anything. You'd have to write down all the passwords anytime you would you know make any progress and i thought it was really cool i had like because the, all the uh the old Mega Man passwords were done kind of like in a grid format like where you would they'd be either filled by like a an energy tank or a dot or something and you just kind of fill out this grid so i had a gra- i had graph papers full of um passcodes for Mega Man 2 that i'd come across so <laughs> um but but yeah i kind of i kind i want to beat one of these Mega Man games this year and i'm going to keep Sticking with Mega Man Unlimited just because I think it's such a cool project. It is, it, it is really well designed from from the aspects of they know, they know how to make a Mega Man level hard. They know just where to place enemies so that they're gonna get in your way every time you jump or, um, or respawn when you move them off screen. Like it, that just kept like everything just seemed to be precise and and you know, gone over with a fine tooth comb that they had tested the hell out of this game. And the level design is just, it's just mean because of it, but also something I can really respect. So, um, games from our, uh, our chat audience this week, uh, Jordan's been playing a lot of Bastion. I've actually kind of got the itch to go back and play that. Yeah. I'm thinking about getting that on PC as well. Yeah, um, I have it on my Xbox, but uh, that's such a great debut game yep. from Supergiant. It's amazing. Uh, Nilmar jumped in last week and played some uh, Worms 2 Armageddon, so all things Worms are his game of the week. Um, <laughs> I've also got that installed um, at our office, and we've been starting to do some multiplayer games of that in the office since since we played that last week. Um, and then Aaron, give him more love to Animal Crossing New Leaf. Um, I guess we're... <laughs> I'm still playing five days a week, so I don't know if Aaron can beat that, but it's all Animal Crossing is always on the mind. Uh, moving on to HorribleNight.com highlights. Um, we had a recent episode, so there's really nothing new for me, but what had your attention last week? Uh, you did a Game Curious of that game, Bleed. Yeah. Uh, and it's very pink, but it's also very awesome. Um it looked, it's like a yeah, it's like a two D platformer with what this twin stick shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, it just there's a it seems like it's really hard or can be really hard. A lot of challenges, 
in the levels, but the the level design from what I saw um, is very varied. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not any you know it's not something that you could get sick of I guess of playing the same level over and over again. Um, but I, I just think it looks really neat, and I think um, you know there's a, a plethora of side scroller you know indie side scrollers retro mm-hmm. with retro graphics, but I think this one looked like it stood apart a little bit just the way it controlled and uh, it had like bullet time and I thought that was really cool. So uh, yeah, it's awesome. I, it's... I'm definitely gonna. I think I might have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's less than five bucks. Uh, you can also buy it direct from the developer. Um, but yeah, that game caught really caught me off guard. I honestly bought it just because um, it was five bucks and I thought I'd just take a take a wild swing on a game. And expected it to turn out to be crap, and it's it's you know it was coming off the tail end of Rogue Legacy, which has kind of been our like indie darling lately. And but sure. um, you know it doesn't it doesn't have near the polish of, of that game, but this this thing does so many things uniquely, but also it just it it shouldn't work. It should be way too complex to play, but it is, it is a fucking blast to play. Uh, on to our worst of the weekend gaming, uh, just something uh, in the game industry that has been bugging you in the last week. Um, from chat, um, <laughs> Aaron, all he has to say is when he's not playing Animal Crossing, like when he's typing this answer. Uh, my <laughs> my worst of the week is American McGee and the fact that they just canceled his Kickstarter for his Oz, Oz Zombie game. So... He's the he's obviously the guy behind the uh, Alice games of recent memory, and this Kickstarter was just kind of backwards from the beginning because he was trying to tie in to some of the 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 goals, like the stretch goals of of this project that he would also be using the money to secure the film rights to his to the Alice movies from based on his games because they apparently got optioned years and years ago um, after the first Alice game came out and it just cut, was kind of just one of those things in the you know the fine print or whatever that Kickstarter that was like this has nothing to do with this this Oz game which looks you know pretty interesting if you dig American Beagie's style um, but the guy's got kind of they've got kind of a iffy track record ever since that Alice game um, but long story short, he said things were just getting too complicated, and the Kickstarter was not on pace to be a success. So he's going to cancel this Kickstarter and relaunch a Kickstarter solely to raise money to get the Alice film rights back in his control. And it's really strange. Yeah, it's just kind of misguided too. I feel like you know I really liked Alice. But his whole, he's got a very interesting development history. He's, you know, he's originally was one of the level designers, I believe, um, on Doom 1 and 2. Like, he's from that original id Software team. It's kind of where he cut his chops and struck out trying to make a name for himself, you know, um, by putting his name in front of some of his games. Definitely kind of worked because he's still rele- relevant enough to talk about, but it's kind of... If you look at him as to, as far as what have you done for me lately, um, the track record's not so great. And these Kickstarters just, you know, when you see something like this and even the Shadows of the Eternals, it's just like misunderstanding, misunderstanding or uh, under or overestimating your, what your following is. And I'll be really curious to see what type of support his he gets for getting film rights back to that, too. You know, I would like to see an Alice movie. I think that'd be kind of crazy. But I don't even know if he's the best guy to produce that at this point. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and with video game movies kind of, you know, being up in the air. And, <laughs> I think Mangler... And, you know, they're, 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 all, they're all, like, uh, option, but they never come out and all that stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, even if he gets the rights, it doesn't necessarily mean something's going to happen, but... He wants control of it because nobody's doing anything with it. But I think Mangler103 in chat summed it up well that misguided people are are the main thing you can find on Kickstarter. <laughs> like Absolutely. It's just really uh, 
you don't have a good understanding of uh, kind of where your place is. But uh, and then I guess he's gonna also return to try to do another Kickstarter for the Oz Zombie game later. But he's gonna focus on the movie for now. That's just really weird. Um, what is your worst of the week? My worst of the week is the same thing that uh, Jordan said is the Nintendo's reaction and to EVO, um, which is the fighting tournament that was this past weekend. Uh, so EVO, you know, like it's take Street Fighter. I don't know if Mortal Kombat's on there, but Marvel vs. Capcom, um, Smash Brothers, and they do tournaments and then they stream them online. Well, Nintendo... Um, shut down the Smash Brothers stream and apparently they said that they didn't even want the game at EVO at all um, to to be played but then uh, community backlash once again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> changed the company's mind and they said okay um, which I don't really see like I'm not a huge Smash Brothers fan so I don't really see like the tournament aspect of that game. I think mm-hmm. it's just a bunch of, bunch of button mashing buttons. <laughs> you haven't um, seen high level Smash Brothers play. I haven't play. seen high level Smash Brothers play and I won't watch high level Smash Brothers play. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to see any Jigglypuff tactics, Aaron. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, again, with like the YouTube, like uh, putting commercials in front of their gameplay streams and now just, just basically saying F you to the, the community that's still holding on to support for their games is so kind of is again is misguided mm. and I just I just don't know what they're doing. I mean I'm glad they changed their mind and let people play Smash Brothers because I know a ton of people like that game, but Well I evidently it broke all the um Evo, Evo um like live streaming records as far as the amount of people watching. Good. That's good. <laughs> so like, Nintendo learned from that. Yeah. Like, don't don't disallow your games from being streamed. Don't put your own stupid ads in front of streams of your games that are being made more popular because of said streams. Like, like we're I don't know. Like, yeah, know everyone's keeping your legacy alive. Like, yeah, and you're not you're not doing much of it with the Wii U. That's for sure. <laughs> it is so. It just it also just seems like I don't know the the way I look at it, it looks like you know. <sighs> there are two parts of Nintendo that just aren't talking to each other. Like they don't seem to be this company that's going to kind of smash their fans. And yet they continue to do this on the other, like it just it's something, like something is off. Yeah. Cause they're, they're playing towards their hardcore fans by giving them a new donkey Kong, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Giving them Mario Kart, giving them a new Mario game, giving them new Zelda and giving them old Zelda. Like that part is so crazy. When you think about, like you said, this this other Nintendo, this marketing Nintendo, who's saying, "Don't stream our stuff." Mm-hmm. Like, you're not doing anything with it. <laughs> so why don't you let these people who love your games show their love online, and you just you know sit back and enjoy the profits of new people discovering those old games and going back to purchase them? Yeah. It's what am I so supposed stupid. to do with my GameCube copy? A Smash Brothers in exactly. 2013. What do you want me to do with it, Nintendo? Like, right. just keep it a secret. Yeah, don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't, don't, we don't. We don't talk about our oh, GameCube games. We don't stream Smash Brothers on the internet. God. Are they thinking their game's too good to be streamed online? I mean, they, <laughs> man, they, they need some serious PR help before they fall off the cliff. Like I, right now, they're just. I think people are just kind of laughing at him like the out of touch grandpa, you know what I mean? But like right. they're going to come out and just do something really racist that we can't defend and it's going to get ugly. <laughs> I was on uh I so when I started my computer today, I I guess it was gone NeoGaf the other day and I don't usually go there, but I saw a link that said what if Mark Cerny ran Nintendo. And I was like, "Holy shit." <laughs> That's like the the fresh ideas that they need. What if like, Nintendo just got on? Nintendo and Sony finally made up. And yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. Like it's just, it's just we are crazy. two depressed Nintendo fans right now. Exactly. Like I don't know. Like Iwadu. Like he's not going to fire anybody because he doesn't want morale to go down. Yet it doesn't seem like the the board is going to fire him because they're still 
making money somewhere. You know, <laughs> it's like they're just making enough on 3DS to where yeah. they're okay, and they have enough money left over from the Wii success that it's like, well, we'll keep we'll keep riding this same horse. Um, and then just the Japanese culture, they don't like to fire people yeah. in general. So, but there's got to be a change, like. Like you said, we're just too depressed, Nintendo fans. <laughs> I don't even Look, know what to say anymore. Looking at our Wii U's, are you, are you, you know, you're all over your Vita. Are you playing any 3DS these days? No, okay. not at all. I turned it on the other day, downloaded an update, checked yeah. the eShop, turned it off. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh, hey, I have a Fire Emblem. I should probably play that. <laughs> yeah, not right now. What about any Wii U virtual console stuff of you? Um... Uh, been starting and stopping on Super Metroid. Mm. Um, dude, I can't beat that first boss. <laughs> like where the, you get the flower the, thing? No, no, no. Well, you get the. Um, I don't know if it's a boss. It's a the plant where, where you get the morph ball. Not the morph ball. The bombs. Yeah. And then that that thing comes alive, and you try to find the Chozo it. statue. Yeah, dude, I can't beat it. <laughs> wow. I get so frustrated. I mean, keep fighting. Keep your head up. Get through the game. Too. Yeah. I think that thing almost killed me too. But I'm just glad you didn't die on the plant. If you die on the plant, then I'm laughing at you. I don't know. Where, when's the plant? Is that before that or after that? It's right before Crate. So. Okay. Well, I'm not even there yet. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck. Good luck with Super Metroid. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right. But on to happy things. Uh, best of the week. Uh, you might get excited by this. I was excited by this because Giant Bomb woke up this week. To Jeff Gersman, <laughs> just I, I just pictured this like I'm not gonna write anything for the site today, but then he gets this trailer delivered to him and he has to post it uh, for WWE 2K14, which is also a funny title just because the fact that it really is wrapped into the 2K world now. Yeah. Um, but not only is Ultimate Warrior apparently in this game, but he did the promo for it like today's Ultimate Warrior. Like short cropped gray hair, goatee. He's still buff though. He he's he was still cut and as intense as ever, beating up on a bunch of the uh, developers at 2K in the promo. Loved every second of it. I just watched it right before we uh, started this podcast, and I haven't bought a wrestling game in a really long time, and just that single promo. <laughs> <laughs> has made me think really hard about getting 2K14. Like you said, I, like you said earlier, I wish it came out on PC because I think it'd be it'd be more fun to play. But um, right. oh, man, that, that game is sorry, I'm messing with my dog right now. Um, that game was just because Ultimate Warriors in it. It's gonna be awesome. And I know he was in, I know he was in All Stars and stuff, and he was fun to play in that. But man. I don't know, the, the, the hair physics, I, the hair it physics. Looked, it looked really bad. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it looked really bad, and I think Macho Man's going to be in this game, too, so. Oh, wow. So it's doing, good. Yeah. bring in some, some real yeah, old they're, school. Yeah, they're, they're Michael Jordan, the, Jord- oh, okay. Michael Jordan at the, like they did 2K12. When's their, when's their Dream Team game? I'll get that one. Oh, I don't even know what that would be. Is that the Survivor Series? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean actually get just the Hulkster back. Uh, no, get the Dream Team basketball no, players in there. Yeah, they already have the models. I think yeah, I think Bird and Magic were in that game too with Jordan. Charles Barkley versus Ted DiBiase. Oh my god. <laughs> um, oh my god! Shut up and give me your money. The best of the week for Aaron was actually, uh, sorry, I jumped the gun on this one, Aaron. The the performance of Super Smash Brothers at uh, Evo. So. Um, and like I said, broke, breaking some basically live streaming audience records with that one, at least for uh, for Evo. And then Jordan and you, you guys are thinking alike this week. Uh, what's your best of the week? My first Steam sale. Like, <laughs> man, how are you? So, how are you so hanging great. in there? I've bought thirteen games. Um, okay, most of them indie. Uh, well, actually, like technically, thir- I bought I bought ten. Okay. Uh, I have three in my cart right now. Okay. Uh, to be purchased after the show, and they are Fallout, Fallout New Vegas, and Unreal Tournament 2004. <laughs> um, so I'm doing well. Um, 
I mean, that's under like that's under fourteen dollars for all three of those games. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, like I, I told you earlier that I was I was kind of disappointed because they're not doing the publisher packs. Yeah, and this but, since it's, <laughs> this is my first Steam sale, I wanted to get in on that. Did your but dog I, just I, sneeze? Yeah, he just okay. sneezed. He's he's all right. <laughs> um, and I wanted to get in on the publisher packs, but I understand why they're not doing it anymore because they weren't selling probably anymore because everybody would buy them. Um, over that disappointment, like getting a bunch of indie games for really cheap is really cool. Um, and you know, it's it's been it's been pretty good to me so far. Cool. Yeah, uh, they are doing a lot of. I mean, the, the publisher game collections aren't there, but they are. Like any game that is a franchise tends to have a pack, and those have been. Right. Uh, you can kind of hand select them a little bit because I don't know if you were a part of any of the other previous sales like myself, those publisher packs were dangerous because most of them you owned a handful of the games in them and end up buying them twice and that kind of thing. So, But then I could give gifts to people who already have them. <laughs> um, I would actually say worst of the week also for me is the other side of the summer, the Steam sales. Have you gotten into the trading cards at all? Have you looked into that? I looked at them a little bit. And I was like, "This is kind of silly," uh, I ch- I, but I did check the marketplace for how much my cards were going for. I, I I tried to sell some today for the first time, so this is the first time I've uh, messed with it. I haven't bought any. Who, this, I haven't bought any. I won't buy any. I'm not that interested in it. I don't like collecting yeah, cards but, anymore. I'm not an eight year old kid who's into baseball. But um, but I have nine out of the ten cards for my badge, and I keep buying games, and the card doesn't show up, and. And I can just buy it, but it won't let me. And I shouldn't do it. And no, you shouldn't do it. Just you, stop. Do you have Do you have the um, the Acre Ball Space Program card? Because I really want it. I don't even know how I check out what card. <laughs> it's in your inventory. No. Um, I have not bought a card yet, but the fact that it even entered across my mind today um, is is bad bad news for the future of these trading cards. Sorry, my dog just about ripped the headphones off my head. <laughs> um, the yeah, one of the guy who gave me Persona Four at work, he sold a card for forty cents yesterday. He said, "Yeah." So he's like, he was like, we were talking about it on Friday. He's like, I don't really know what these card things are all about. And then he's like, but I'm gonna investigate them this uh, this weekend. Man, see what it's all about. Man, I think it's like partially like my moving on from my Xbox Live gamer tag a bit. And all the time and investment I put into into that and my achievements, like I I want something else to invest in, and this whole build up of your Steam profile is pretty dangerous territory for me. So I did not expect to pay attention to the trading cards at all, but like you won't pay attention to them until you're like you're one card away from something. And now here's what I, here's what I have: Bioshock Infinite, Football Manager 2013, Prison Architect, three Reyeses, and one Tomb Raider. So, if you need any of those, I'd be willing to just give them to you. Uh, nope, I don't need any of those. I need one. I need the space program one. Is it okay. Acre Ball? What's that thing called? But anyway, out know. of all the games you have bought or haven't bought. Um, our question of the week is uh, what are your Steam sale mistakes or victories? What thing are you most proud or least proud of? Oh, man. I think I'm most proud of buying a bunch of indie games that I wouldn't necessarily have bought before. Um, like Anodyne, which is like an RPG, old school mm-hmm. RPG. Antichamber. Uh, Don't Starve. Uh, no, I already had that. Um, what was the other one? Proteus, Cinemora. I would never have bought Cinemora unless that's, it was like That's super actually cheap. a better game than you would think. No, no, I, I knew it was. Like I looked at it, and I was like, "That looks really good." I would never buy this if I was paying full price. And FTL. Those are the some of the games I picked up. Far Cry Three, um, which I've been wanting for a while, and then like all the Fallout. So, I, I mean. I, I think I've done pretty well. I don't think I've done any had any big mistakes. I've been pretty pretty selective in what I was going to buy. Um, Let's see. Although I did think about buying like so a Mass Effect collection, but I'm like, man, I can't do that. All right. When did this sale sale start? The tenth. Started Thursday. 
Is that the tenth? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, for some reason, I bought something on the tenth. Good, good job. Way to buy Burnout Paradise oh, no. and Need for Speed right before Wednesday. That. Wednesday was the tenth. Thursday was the eleventh. So. Okay, so let's 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 see what I have done. I don't know why I bought Alice Madness Returns for ten bucks. Uh, I already <laughs> sold that game on the three hundred and sixty. Uh, let's. What else? We yeah, I think I spent about a hundred bucks for all like fifteen games that I've bought. Dungeon Siege Three. Guarantee I won't play that. Um, but you know, it's like I have. You know, when you have torchlights and Diablos to co-op with your buddies, why would you play Dungeon Siege Three? I don't know. Uh, Battlefield <laughs> Bad Company Two. Six bucks. Thought about that. I can't be mad about six bucks. I. I Freaking love Bad Company. I actually just wanted Bad Company one, but just cost two for two dollars and fifty cents. Bought it. Uh, can't be mad at two fifty. I'm mad about that. Okay, here's the last batch here. Mirror's Edge. Apparently, I didn't own that. <laughs> Kerbal Space Program. Not Acre. Yeah. I kept calling Acre Ball. I don't even know why that's in my head, but the. I'm okay with that. I thought I made another silly one today. Trials Evolution. Not mad about that. Oh. Worms Armageddon. I've got like all the Worms games now. There's a Worms pack. Okay. So Dungeon Seed 3 is probably the... It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. It's. I mean, I've been heavy on the last two Steam sales, so I'm just surprised I'm still finding stuff and making it seem like uh, those are worthwhile purchases. But like I said, when I can convince myself I'm actually going to play Dungeon Siege 3 when it's not going to happen, um, anything's possible. So, <laughs> um, But if it's under 5 bucks, it's really hard to be like, why the hell not? Just have it in your collection for that weird, weird-ass rainy day. So... I think that's it for Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. We'll be back with another episode next week. Um, thanks for everybody that joined in chat and helped us with our questions of the week. We will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>